Let's talk today about the one thing that can completely change your body composition. And I didn't learn this from reading a book, I learned this through experience. And when I tell you the change that I made, do not turn off this video. Watch the whole thing because I am gonna tell you the ins and the outs and the hows and the whys about why I gave up cardio and take my strength training seriously. Welcome to Boom 50 Fitness. My name's Regan and this is your channel for all things health and fitness in your 50s and beyond. I started this in my 50s, but I really wish I had started this in my 40s because that's when I started to see some of the little changes in my body. My cardiovascular endurance was super, super strong, but I noticed even with the strength training that I was doing, I just wasn't able to progressively overload. That just means adding more weight or adding more repetitions. So just making the workout a little bit harder. I was doing the same types of routines and I wasn't progressing at all. And if I'm being completely honest, those long runs and those long spin sessions were just making my body feel softer, not stronger. So yes, there's an aesthetic component to this as well. So if you are confused about what exercises you should be doing in midlife, you have come to the right place. So really let's unpack this idea of giving up cardio and focusing more on strength training. You, like me, way back when, we were taught that cardio was everything. This was your golden ticket to fitness. We were told that it would help burn calories and we were also told that it was the best thing you could do to tone your muscles. And if you wanted to lose fat, Cardio, cardio, cardio was the way to do it. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I used to be a cardio queen and I talk about it a lot on this channel because it was kind of hard for me to give it up. I loved going on long runs. I loved teaching one to two, sometimes up to four spin classes a day when I owned my studio. And I loved all the other types of cardio in between. And I have taught everything from floor aerobics to step aerobics to kickboxing to boot camps to spin classes, you name it, I taught it. I loved it. And when I was living in Seattle, I would ride my bike to all the different studios that I was teaching at. And all the cardio classes I taught were super popular because this is the time when we were taught that the, you could burn the most calories during cardio and if you burned the calories you would burn the fat burning the calories was the key and now we know that a calorie is not just a calorie not all calories are created equal this is another thing i have mentioned in several videos is that exercise is stress and anytime you put stress on your body you are raising up those cortisol levels, but your body needs cortisol. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but we have to be choosy, especially in midlife, with what exercises we choose to do. And why do we have to make these changes in midlife? Well, our hormones are just in a more volatile state. And with these hormonal changes, our body just doesn't handle stress the way it used to. As estrogen goes down, cortisol starts to go up. That's the stress hormone. So if you are a midlife cardio queen, now is the time to scale back, especially if you are noticing these changes in your body or you're trying to change your body composition. The absolute worst thing you could do is add more cardio to your workout. I know, it's the opposite of what we were told in the past. But because our bodies are working so differently now, this is something you really, really need to take seriously. I'm not telling you to give up your favorite hit style workout or your favorite spin class or going out for a run, but I'm just telling you to maybe scale back. So maybe the cardio classes that you like or whatever cardio you like to do outside or at the gym, you just scale back and maybe not do the cardio as many days of the week. And if you give up 
those types of cardio sessions completely, that is when you're really going to see the difference in your body composition. If I had to pick any style of class for you to take besides like yoga, which we all know is so good for you, or a meditation class, I would say pick a HIIT style workout. However, what you want to make sure of is that during the cardio parts of the HIIT style workout, you're not over exerting yourself to the point where you can't lift the heavy weights when it comes to the strength training part. And I know that's the problem with a lot of the HIIT style workouts is, you know, you get on a bike and you ride really fast or you get on a treadmill and you run or you hike up a hill really fast for a few minutes and then you go to do a chest press or chest flies and your heart rate is still elevated and you're just not able to push yourself with the weights the way you should be pushing yourself. So if you do choose to do a HIIT style workout, like I'm thinking a Barry's Boot Camp, Orange Theory, that type of class, just make sure that maybe you personally scale back on the cardio part a little bit so that you can work at your highest potential during the strength training parts. Because yeah, it is still important to work your body cardiovascularly. So if you love that cardio and you are just not ready to give it up, that's okay. Just either scale back on the frequency or the duration, or maybe both. We all know a body in motion stays in motion. So movement really is the key here, but not movement that overtaxes your body and raises your cortisol levels too much. So what we do know now is that a strength training workout with small intervals of cardio will burn fat for a longer period of time after your workout. And it's not just about burning the calories, it's about burning the fat. Our lives are stressful enough. You might be dealing with being an empty nester or aging parents, or maybe you're struggling in a relationship, whatever it might be, we don't want to bring the cortisol levels up too high. So yeah, let's not add any more stressors to your life. And why are we so afraid of stress and raising the cortisol levels? Well, if your body is under stress, what's going to happen is your body is going to start hanging on to fat. And I know you don't want that. So that is reason enough to scale back on that cardio and do things for your body that don't raise the cortisol levels too much. I know some of you out there are thinking, wait a minute, I exercise to keep my stress levels low. And there's something to be said about that. So if you think that the HIIT style workout class you're taking or the spin class or your long run, that is really helping keep your stress levels low, that's awesome. Keep doing it, maybe scale back a little bit, but what you definitely wanna focus on is the importance of a good cool down. So don't just do a two or three minute stretch at the end of the class, which I have to admit, even as an instructor, when we had to shorten a class or when it was getting towards the end of the class, a lot of times it didn't leave much time for a nice long stretch. So stay and stretch, give yourself at least a 10 minute cool down. Don't just hop off the spin bike and then go for coffee with the person who is sitting next to you. So it really can be as simple as that. I talk about this a lot. Um, after I do my strength training sessions, I will just go for a little walk and that just helps bring the cortisol levels that spiked during the workout to come back down. And along the same lines as a cool down, it's really important as you get older to embrace those rest days even more. Because remember, it's the rest days when your body recovers and gets stronger. It's not getting stronger during the exercise. Real quick plug, when it comes to recovery, creatine is one of the best things you can take. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about why you should be taking creatine, but I will link a video right up above that you need to check out if you're not already taking creatine. Okay, so let's talk strength training. Now we know that cardio will burn calories and will actually burn more calories than a strength training session usually, but it's those strength training sessions that you'll burn more calories throughout the day. Which means the stronger you are, the more you're gonna burn calories just at rest. And why is that? 
Well, I think you all know by now that when you strength train, you create these tiny little minute muscle tears. And when the body repairs itself, it takes more calories. You burn through more calories just repairing the muscle. Let's go back to that old school way of thinking that the more calories you burn, the more toned you would be which is just the opposite and even more so as we get older. The toning and the definition that you all want out there requires muscle. And maybe you're thinking, well, I just wanna lose the fat so you can see the muscle. Are you afraid of bulking up? Well, I hate to tell you this. Well, maybe I'm happy to tell you this. If you're in your 40s or 50s and you're just starting a weightlifting program and you're using heavy weights, you are not going to bulk up. But maybe in your 20s and your 30s and into your 40s, you did more cardio and then you started to look more toned. Well, that's just not going to happen anymore if you're a midlife lady. You know what happens is you lose muscle and you get that flabby flab and that extra skin that hangs down. So the cardio ship that's gonna help you look more toned has sailed. The tone and the definition come from lean muscle, and we want to encourage that calorie burn around the clock. So the way to do that is with strength training. Lean muscle mass is not synonymous with bulking up, so just take that out of the equation. Think of it this way. The more lean muscle you have, the smaller you're going to be in size. Your clothes are gonna start feeling a little bit different. They might not be as tight in the waist. And that is the best way to determine your body composition. In fact, I would encourage every single one of you out there to just ditch the scale. More on that another time. So right now, in this stage of our lives, we want to do everything we possibly can do to preserve the lean muscle we already have and hopefully add some more. But at a minimum, we want to maintain what we have. And that will help maintain our strength, our stamina, and our endurance. And all those things will help with your energy levels throughout the day. But make sure you don't overdo the strength training and you make sure to take those rest days because remember, I said it earlier, it's during those rest days when your body gets stronger. And rest days as we get older should definitely consist of some functional movement. Um, one of the things I just love to do, and I do this on my strength days too, is I just love to go on long walks. I live in, in New York City, I don't have a car, I walk everywhere. So that I encourage all of you guys out there to walk, walk, walk as much as possible. So a rest day should not just be sitting on your bum with the remote and watching Netflix. I still encourage you to just move your body a lot in a nice gentle way. So if you want to speed up your metabolism, which at this point in your life you may think has slowed down a lot, strength training is the way to go make strength training your new bff so i mentioned the whole thing about the calorie burn where you'll burn calories during cardio but you'll burn calories for a longer period of time after strength training well after a strength training session you can continue to burn calories for up to 48 hours after that workout that is not happening with cardio so in midlife can you hear that Something's happening down there. Um, so in midlife, basically, if you only have a certain amount of time and you don't have time to do both the strength training and some cardio, some light cardio, always lean in towards the strength training. All right, so you want to know how many days a week you should be strength training. Well, if you don't strength train at all, I would start with two days a week. But eventually, you want to work up to three to four days a week of strength training and ditch that high intensity cardio that is just going to skyrocket that cortisol. I can't tell you how much my body has changed since I gave up the cardio, embraced heavy lifting, and use my strength training sessions as my cardio because if you're lifting heavy, your heart rate's gonna go up and incorporating a lot of walking. My body composition 
has changed dramatically. I feel stronger than ever right now at 56 than I ever have before. So there we have it. That is the one thing that can change your body composition for good. It worked for me and I know it can work for you. If you've got any questions or you wanna leave a comment, please, I encourage you to do so down below. And if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go ahead, smash that subscribe button. And let me take a brief moment to thank all of you out there that have subscribed. I'm watching this channel grow and it's so fun building this amazing community of people who just want to be healthy and fit. And also, if you want to know when my next video drops, just go ahead and ring that notification bell. And that's it for today, my friends. My name's Regan. This is Boom 50 Fitness, your new BFF. I will see you next time I see you. Bye. And this is Fiona. Mwah.